Hi, uh, thanks for checking out this video on Teams Governance. This is Jag from Modern Work Group. We specialize in helping businesses improve the usage of Microsoft 365 platform through customized user training and business solution consulting. This is a multi-part video series on how to set up Teams Governance um, to improve user adoption and workplace productivity in your business. We have Pairi uh, with, uh, from Powell Teams with us. Uh, we will actually talk through on uh, various aspects of Teams governance throughout this video series. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing to the Modern Work YouTube channel and also follow us on the LinkedIn um, uh, as well. So thanks, Perry. Thanks for joining us on uh, this uh, video series uh, on uh, <clears throat> to discuss on why Teams governance is important, especially in this video. And we'll also talk about multiple aspects of Powell Teams and Teams governance in general, uh, you know, in the coming uh, in the videos. Before we get going, uh, can you please uh, introduce yourself, Perry, and uh, and tell us a bit about yourself and uh, also Powell Teams, and then we can get going. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Jag, and thanks for uh, thanks for having me here today. Um, so, by way of quick introduction, my name is Pierre. I'm uh, I'm based out of Australia, and I uh, I represent Power Software basically for the whole of uh, APEC uh, here. Um, and uh, and just to give you a very quick uh, very quick introduction on on Power Software, we're essentially a global uh, ISV that specializes in dig digital workplace solutions and a, a gold uh, partner, uh, Microsoft partner. Sorry. Um, so we we our offering uh, is uh, comprised in uh, in two key solutions. First of all, Pal Intranet, which is our Intranet in a box solution that goes on top of SharePoint, and then Pal Teams, which we'll get into more detail uh, later on in this uh, in this series of videos, basically, and which is a Microsoft Teams application, which is here to fill some of the gaps that are left by Microsoft when it comes to governance and also enhance end user adoption. Perfect, uh, excellent, uh, Perry. Thanks for that. Um, I'm actually a, 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 a good user of Powell Teams myself, and I really love the product as such, and how how it can actually improve the the, the total governance aspect of of Teams. Like you said, you know, it's just not about uh, you know supporting your team creation; it's about improving user experience as well from from a overall user experience point of view as uh, as well. So we will uh, we'll touch into those aspects uh, in our video series. Talking about the video series, uh, this is a a probably a nine to ten part series on various aspects of uh, Teams governance. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about why is Teams governance really important um, for businesses. Now that you know we are all working remotely or hybridly, uh, you know, in a hybrid setup at the moment, um, and we need online tools to ha actually be more uh, productive and also collaborate with our work colleagues and stuff. As as that's happening, uh, you know, due to COVID nineteen and and others, you know, we're seeing people uh, teams working in a in a uh, dispersed en environment, right? And for that. Teams is a great product uh, where you can actually have not just online meetings and, and chats, you can also bring in other applications and, and have all of your data applications all within a single pane of glass uh, to get your work done, right? With that, the user adoption of Teams has, has skyrocketed in the last few uh, months in, in 2020. Uh, with, that, with that growth, it also brings other headaches for from uh, for, for the IT teams in order to manage um, their teams from uh, teams as well, right? And that's just a headache from the IT perspective. But there's also you know headaches caused to the T uh, to the users, general users as well. So uh, I had one CEO from one of my uh, clients uh, talking about Jack. We we love Microsoft Teams. However, I've been uh, because I'm an executive. I've I've uh, invited into multiple teams and I have a lot of documents flying back and forth and there's so many teams. I don't know which team I'm actually participating in at any point of time. I don't know which is the right, uh, the important team because there are multiple duplicates of of, of a team as well. So uh, yes, Microsoft Teams allows us to be more productive and, and it gives you a, a good platform to be, you know, to collaborate and, and be more, more, more productive and I'll maintain, you know, your proper document management system and things. If you don't man manage your teams, it can cause a lot of headaches for both the IT and the users as well, right? Uh, I wanted to talk about that today with you, Perry, and, and understand why Teams governance is important and why the IT departments should consider having a Teams governance solution on, uh, on top of uh, what they have today. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a great topic actually, and it's a, a topic we've been talking about for the for the past couple of months really. Um, I've I've been speaking with a lot of organizations in the in the recent month uh, that have rolled out teams during the pandemic, uh, more or less in a rush uh, for for some of them, and yeah. that are now facing two 
two key challenges, I'd say. Uh, first, we see, we see a lot of uh, companies that have rolled out teams with no thoughts whatsoever around governance, and they are now facing a massive issue around team sprawl and just a sprawl of information in general. So it's really about uh, gaining back the control over their environment on teams. And then another case scenario where we have uh, companies that have been rolling out teams with a big concern uh, around governance and that as a result of it have restricted the self-provisioning of teams to their end users. And now they are looking mm. at ways to implement governance rules so that they can empower end users and have them create teams on their own and use teams to its full capabilities, basically. That's right. So with that restricted uh, uh, you know, access to teams or to creation of teams, for example, uh, that can actually lead to you know, um, impacting the user adoption, uh, uh, and uh, you know, and and user if people are not using it again, it's going to impact the productivity, uh, overall productivity as well, right? So I've seen people use the self service model where it's an open uh, open platform for everybody, and I've also seen restricted, um, uh, you know, setups of Microsoft Teams. So we need to come up with that sort of you know a, a middle ground where you know the users are getting what they need. And IT is happy in terms of uh, managing the growth and, and and things as well, right? Absolutely. No, yeah, I totally yeah. agree with that. And it's something we see across so many organizations right now. And um, yeah, so many yeah. so many uh, consulting partners are facing the same issues with their with their customers at the moment. Uh, and which is which is why we came up with uh, with the solution like Pal Teams. Really, was the 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 main idea was to empower companies to um, to make the most out of their Microsoft Teams investment and really utilize Teams to to the most, uh, really. Um, so when we look at when we look at governance and, and maybe it'll be good to uh, to talk about governance in uh, in general first uh, yes. because governance is is very often uh, associated with uh, control and possibly restrictions. Um, so organization very often under pressure from IT, a concerned users will set something um, something incorrectly or give the wrong users access to uh, confidential information. And these concerns can really be amplified when considering Microsoft Teams, because the default positioning uh, is that all users can create new teams uh, and manage who has access and so on, basically. Yep. So as a result, the creation process of Teams is, is often locked um, and, and users end up having to submit uh, an IT service desk request, for example, to create their teams, which is not ideal. Yeah. Um, and and this uh, this approach really is, as a result, is is stifling the the adoption and is increasing the the risk of shadow IT as well within companies. Yeah, absolutely. So, in so, the, so let's yeah. let's look at uh, based on that uh, what you got uh, on the screen there. I mean, let, let's talk about how the team's governance, you know, uh, from an end user perspective and also from an IT uh, admin perspective, and why uh, why you should consider team's governance and and probably maybe look into some of how as well. Um, Absolutely. So. First of all, it'll be, I mean, the governance strategy will always be specific to the business itself uh, and yeah. to the different use cases within a business. So all of these strategies will be fairly unique, but we always find common um, common scenarios, basically, and from two main angles. First of all, from the end user standpoint, and that's the whole point of putting, a, putting a, in place a governance uh, plan on Teams is really to empower end users and have them use teams to uh, to its maximum capability, basically. So the idea is really to encourage collaboration um, in the platform while maintaining a sacred environment obviously um, the also one of the one of the key benefits of having a strong governance strategy is to make it more simple for end users to create teams uh, and more smooth basically yeah and also to have them find the relevant information uh, really quickly as compared to having a, an environment where the information is sprawled all over the place yeah yeah I think the discoverability of information is, is really key as well. So one, uh, I was working with a customer before and I, I have, uh, um, one of the questions that the customer raised is around, you know, Jack, we, we tend to create a lot of teams because people, uh, users are not really seeing wh what are the uh, private teams that exist in the system because uh, by default, Microsoft team, uh, Teams interface, when you go to create a team, it'll only show you all the existing public teams, not the private teams, right? So they may actually end up with having multiple uh, versions versions of a, a private team, let's say HR version, and there could be another team called people and culture, probably essentially doing the same thing. And now you end up dealing with two different private teams and people don't know which one is the right one and where the relevant information is as well and so forth. 
Exactly. And that's yeah. how you end up with so many teams in your in your environment. And yeah. that's the whole point also of having a governance is to make sure that IT uh, or, or the admin is, is comfortable with uh, Microsoft Teams in general. Uh, so having that governance strategy in place is going to make sure you're going to be able to make sure that your content is secured, first of all, uh, and that you can manage the information overload uh, and really manage the risk of a team sprawl, as well as the team's life cycle, which is also a very, very important point uh, in, when looking at the at the longer longer term on uh, on Microsoft Teams. And finally, yeah, reassuring IT while empowering users, which is again the main point of having this uh, this strategy in place. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for that, Barry. I think uh, we've established why Teams uh, governance is really important, right? Um, how do a let's say the organization has already gone and 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 rolled out Teams without uh, thinking much? Uh, how do they go about you know starting starting to think about uh, Teams governance now? Uh, now that you know the pandemic has as as uh, um, you know people are coming back to the offices now, uh, especially in some countries or maybe in some countries they're going back into lockdowns. And this is going to be on and off now uh, with what's happening with COVID nineteen, and and I think this is going to be a somewhat semi permanent down the track as well. So, with that having all the all the all these teams existing in the system, you know how do these organizations go about implementing a team's governance? Yeah, so the good news, first of all, is that it's never too late to implement governance on Teams uh, and that you can have uh, you can you can implement governance that's retroactive and that's that's applied to existing teams in your environment. So that's the great news. It's never too late. Uh, and and I think in the in the upcoming videos of this series, we'll we'll talk about some of the key points. Um, but uh, I'm thinking about, for example, having an approval workflow in place around the team's creation, which is really important. That gives really 100% control over the team's creation process for IT. Managing team names, for example, managing guest access, the lifecycle, those type of things is really important and mo most importantly is, is really about working with consultants that know about Microsoft Teams and ha that have the experience of implementing uh, governance strategies because they'll have that, that industry expertise and, and that past experience uh, of implementing these uh, type of strategies really. Okay, excellent. Uh, thanks for that, uh, uh, Perry. I think that's really what we wanted to cover in this uh, in this part of this uh, the video series, right? About why teams governance is important, and and uh, what my key understanding from this uh, video is is really uh, every it's never too late to start talking about teams governance or thinking about teams governance in your organization. And every every organization is unique, so there's no one um, cookie cutter solution from a teams governance perspective because every organization is unique. You can actually think about having a a proper governance plan that's where we come in to assist with the, the customers to in order to understand how a business works and how uh, what are their collaboration requirements and stuff and then put together a governance plan around it and so and 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 that which supports security and uh, and concerns of it and making sure that uh, the end users have a smoother collaboration experience using microsoft teams am i right absolutely totally cool. right Cool. Thanks for that, Perry. Uh, so th that's really all the things that we wanted to cover in this uh, in this uh, part one of this uh, video series. Please do consider uh, subscribing to the Modern Work uh, YouTube channel and follow us on the LinkedIn as well to see more videos on Teams governance. If you haven't uh, already used uh, Powell Teams, you uh, you can go to the app Microsoft Teams App Store and then install Powell Teams and subscribe to a, a free trial to start with. In the next uh, part, uh, in the next video, we will actually jump into Microsoft Teams, uh, Powell Teams, sorry, and we'll actually look at, you know, how Powell Teams can help uh, with Teams governance. Just to give you a bit of overview of the interface and, and talk about some of the great aspects, great features of the, of the product. Thanks, Perry. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Jack. Cheers.